Hello, everybody. Uh, this Welcome to a Beacon v. SIUE Red Team uh, playoffs. It is, is it semifinals? Yeah. It's semifinals, which just means finals next, which is awesome. This is seed number one, SIUE Red versus seed four, us Valpo. However, in the season, we are the only team that beat them, which is awesome. I should introduce us. I've been rambling. I'm Jang. <laughs> I'm Aubrey. Awesome is there. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be a great game. <laughs> this is probably the most um, intense game we're going to be looking at this yep. period yep. until, you know, hopefully Valpo will take this map and then go to the next game. And that game will probably be more intense than this. But this is the first seed versus the fourth seed, which is us. And I'm super excited. Maybe uh, last time when we actually went against SIUE, um, they actually went three and two. No, we, we went three. three. We went three and two. <laughs> My bad. My bad. I said that wrong. Uh, we went three and two. Um, which is pretty good, but also pretty crazy. So, mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Um, it looks like uh, Li Zhang Tower was the first map ban, and it looks like we will be playing Nepal because of it. Yep. Nepal's a great map. Uh, we can see some sniping in the back lines, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely a Reinhardt map with yep. Little Flaps. That is perfect. Little Flaps is a Reinhardt main. Mm -hmm. He's also a Ramatra. He does really well for Ramatra. So I feel like that would be both uh, go hand in hand here. And it looks like we're gonna about, about to get into the action. So it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. I love to see it. Yeah, I could also see a few other characters here. Um, maybe um, from like some tank players. I could also see um, some like Roadhog, Lucio, Ana, Bap. Genuinely, you could see a lot of characters here. But I'm really excited. Um, by the way, we have a little bit of a weird setup today. Um, today we're going two DPS, one tank, then two supports. Uh, it was something that the air team requested. So if, we, if we're trying to show you little flaps and we accidentally show you Atlas, you will still get a good content with Atlas probably popping off on Soldier. Uh, but we would <laughs> we might make a little mistakes there. Uh, and not Soldier, we're going Reaper for Atlas. So you love to see it. Um, I was wondering, it's Reinhardt v. Reinhardt right now, which is something I predicted. But on this map specifically, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what the confusion was. The preset was on a different map. All right, yes, this is a incredibly Reinhardt heavy map zone. Uh, mm -hmm. If a team's losing pretty bad, then you would expect to see the Ramatra switch. Uh, other than that, you know, it really is who's the better Reinhardt here and who's the better uh, damage supports and support supports. Looks like everything's the exact same, only Atlas is Reaper instead of May. May's incredible here, but there's a lot of side angles to get around, so you might not see the best from, uh, from a May. So the only team uh, differences currently um, is a um, May instead of a Reaper um, from SIUE. Um, so we're um, already um, tank um, of SIUE going down almost immediately. Um, yeah, so we have a incredible lead from Valpo Beacons, uh, which you love to see. They came out strong, they fought hard. The Symmetra Turrets at the top is exactly what both teams wanted to do there. And it's just the, uh, uh, having the right person diagnose where those turrets are and destroying them. You don't want your Reinhardt to be looking at them. And you also don't want the Reinhardt to feed them. Because Symmetra can get incredibly powerful when uh, Reinhardt's shield is in front of their face. So you gotta be really careful about that. Symmetra does a great job against the Reinhardt, so you really gotta be careful there. Yes, um, we are... Um... Currently, um, yes, uh, those sim turrets give her a lot of um, alt charge and a lot of damage, and that's what ends up really fueling a lot of her wall. Um, for unfortunately, right now, Scoot did go down, but not until we actually we just take off take down the Symmetra and the and the Lucio. Yeah, so it looks Damn. like Valpo Beacon found the uh, th found the tear in the in the th fabric mm -hmm. and really just completely destroyed the team. They're getting a beautiful team kill, 40% ca and counting, continuing. That's really exciting to see. Uh, in terms of ultimates, both teams have a good amount of ultimates. Both supports on on Beacon have it, which is incredible. Uh, but the SIUE is going to have pretty much all their ults available. I believe mm -hmm. our Reinhardt low flaps already shattered, uh, so no surprise he doesn't have it right now. But they are going in hot, so we want to be careful. Scoot gets dropped early on, but they do lose the support, so that's really cool. Does the mate? Yes, the mate does try to get out of that situation. So Reaper does the right thing and reevaluates. Yeah, not um not the most like it's a good blossom, but not the most effective. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to get through 70% SIUE needing to back off. So it looks like May got either blossomed and then died or just switched characters. I think that's what happened. Uh, uh, so and then Atlas was the only one to use the ult on Valpo Beacon. And it was exactly what like they needed in the prescribed situation. Yeah, Reaper ult usually gets more value, but it did enough to like really win the fight. Oh, beautiful shatter. 
So, Just gotta be careful here. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think the man, the opposing team, now a Reaper, Aqua, um, I think they accidentally, uh, fat-fingered the, uh, Blizzard, because they had it, they just, it didn't get through. I think I this, see. I think this is gonna be backing up for Valpo here. Yeah, so Valpo has a 99%, uh, and they just need to contest it to win the point again, uh, so we're looking at anywhere from a team kill to a slowly dragged out pick-by-pick. Uh, either way, it just needs one more fight victory mm -hmm. for it to be Valpo's uh, game, or first round, I should say. Yeah, and they have about four to five chances for this right now. going to be um, some good shots for that. Yeah, and then Diablo Gremory, thank you for the for the bits, is that what it was? Nice, nice. Love to hear it. Um, oh, Orem Corp is going down early, that's unfortunate. Yep. Um, good job taking the rush. Oh, no, that's good. All right, so that's another... Oh, go ahead, Aubrey. No, I was just saying the main thing um, that happened with Corvus there was just getting singled out by that Ryan. Um, Ryan blocked them off from the rest of their team, and that teleport took a few more seconds than they wanted. One nice thing I didn't even notice is it looked like Valpo uh, captured the point for a little bit there, extending the uh, play of time mm -hmm. so that, like, you know, now it's at 40. It's about to be 40%. It would have been a lot higher if they didn't capture it there. Now, this is dangerous. We can see it on our screen, but they can't. The sim turret's behind the pillars there. That's mm -hmm. a dangerous hold to have because it could deal damage to the ride. But they found a good way to get around it with the teleports. So that's really cool. Ooh, Shatter got a lot of value there, but it didn't take the Re Reaper. But the damage is dealt with only yeah. two people, just the Reaper. Reaper's gonna contest that point just to get out of there quickly. But, but he also. Oh no! I'm oh. just saying now he's got his own blossom. I think like whatever damage he did got him all just a little bit more charge. That's basically his blossom. That's right. Valpo has about one to two more fights to win this, and I definitely think they can, especially with the shatter and the blossom going in. They just have to worry about the Kiriko ult. That's a good ult, but not really on the defensive. It's better for the offensive. So you gotta be careful there. Uh, but we do look like same drill, same line. It's pretty good, pretty solid. Um, Let's see, trying to keep the Reaper away. Oh, more bits. You love to see it. The best thing. There's the shatter. The best thing also, I want to see um, this beat come out sooner, and it already did. Um, but that, um, not the beat. Um, the beat from the opposing team could have actually been really bad there if, um, if he had it while um, Atlas was trying to do Blossom. Um, that would have been incredibly unfortunate for Beacon. And that was exactly what we wanted to see. It's a, it's a, not what you were saying, but that, <laughs> that would be unfortunate. But the new game where we have, you know, 99-95, and we got, the, and Beacon got the team kill at the very end, and they were able to secure the point. Mm -hmm. um, but even then, they were almost there to recapture or recontest, and that would have been huge for them. And that's what I'm talking about. It's the number one seed versus the number four seed. This number one seed only lost to us in the past, and both teams had time to grow and advance as, as, as teams. So it's really exciting to see. Definitely going to be close games for the whole season. Uh, the captain did mention to Aubrey. What did he tell you, Aubrey? We're in this together. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, sorry. He said he was coming in with the energy to take it all, like every point. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm... Jinx, you're like. all good you're all good <laughs> i don't think i'm just like on my game today i'm not exactly sure what it is i think you're doing great Aubrey. <laughs> thank you but right. oh i love so real this. quick oh yep i love it too you want to tell me why uh mercy pocket on isaac <laughs> oh yes so Just isaac me. is going to be scoot the soldier <laughs> soldier did get a nerf but a damage boosted Mercy does help it out quite a bit. Um, we do see Little Flaps getting off the Reinhardt, going Orisa. That's a really cool thing to see. Definitely changes the playstyle. Mm -hmm. uh, so no shield is a little different. But oh my goodness, beautiful tracer pick. You'll love yes. to see it. Yes. Um, so during getting that little like um, uh, charge shot on there, uh, Alice is struggling here a little bit, trying uh, trying to take the Reaper duel. Uh, Scoot helping out there. Yeah, Alice is exactly where he needs to be as the Reaper, as you can see with the Lucio going down. Oh, Ooh. oh we almost lost the Orisa there, but we do lose yep. the Mercy. All right, this still looks like a Valpo Beacon victory for, for the fight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that Tracer. <laughs> Poor thing. All right, let's see. It's the only one on point. All it's doing right now is trying to contest yeah. the point. SIUE had control of the point, and they got 30%. It would have been 20% mm -hmm. if it wasn't for that Tracer. So good job to SIUE's Tracer, Saibo. Yes. Um, looking at our alt, um, alt progress, we got uh, about two alts for Valpo and about three-ish alts for SIUE. So very interesting here. 
um, going into this, and I am expecting a shatter soon. Oh, and yes. <laughs> the shatter's going to be really terrifying. We do have a lot of ultimates on both teams, uh, so it really could be whoever does it first or retaliates first. It, it, it is a, it's an ult battle. There's a tracer ult. Doesn't get the value it probably wants. Atlas will ult, uh, so as well as Little Flaps. Kyrko ult comes out from Orm Corvus too. The Reinhardt will fall. Reinhardt doesn't get the shatter. I don't know why he didn't shatter there. That would have been prime. Uh, Siebel, um just barely capping point, but 2% isn't really going to make a difference in the long run. Yeah, 37, 40%. It's still a very close game, we, mm -hmm. and it's still pretty early on. We're about three or four more fights into this game, depending on how it goes. Yes. Um, look, looking at this, it's kind of taking place in the right thing. Um, what I've been noticing so far is the team's really doing a great job in holding them off at those like little doorways right now. Um, I think that's Isaac Ooh. down. Unfortunate timing there. Uh, there's yep. the Ash ult that's coming out, which gives you essentially, effectively, another tank, uh, Bob, on the field. So that's really useful for them. Uh, yep. And that's another thing SIUE has right now, is they have some prime ultimates ready. They have the Shatter, they have the Beat. Like, those are some of the best ultimates to have in this game. Uh, yep. Whereas Valpo Beacon only has a Mercy ult. A very good ult, don't get me wrong, but nothing mm -hmm. that comes close to those other two ults that were just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing right now was... The best thing that happened right now was Lil Flap Flap Street getting out of that unscathed. No death to be seen. Um, which was shocking, but it allowed his um, team to actually group up and work out. Oh, and that was an There's the shadow event. that we've been wi um, missing. There's the res. Beautiful <gasps> res. Keeping the tank in the fight. Ruining the shatter's uh, game that happened there. Yes. And Ooh, there, goes there goes that the Reinhardt. Oh man, yeah. Oh, but oh. the Ash with the double firebomb. You don't love to see it. Oh, Atlas will get a Blossom out. Definitely taking out no. Waffle. But running out of health options here. Is he going to get out of the fight in time? No. Nope. Unfortunate. Yep. Um, right now, uh, Beacon's going to need... This is Beacon's last chance to get the point. Um, one more fight and that's it. We're also seeing a Tracer coming onto the field. Um, from Valpo Beacon to counter Siebel's. Oh, unfortunate. I think Let's that's gonna be it for this round, unless we got some good, good luck or something. Nope. I think that's this right. round's going to SIUE. Um, that uh, that Arisa knockoff of Lil Flaps was really good for SIUE. Yes, very that's good for SIUE. Very tragic to watch as a Valpo Beacon. <laughs> Yes. Um, but that's what we wanted. That's what we expected for these two teams. You know, it's one to one. Yeah. Last point. This point's a really difficult one. Symmetra's really powerful here. Reinhardt, really powerful here. We see the two teams both switch to Reinhardt here. Mm -hmm. No Symmetra. That's okay. We bought two Tracers. Tracer v. Tracer. That is something that you don't see very often. Uh, and there he <laughs> goes. Anymore. He goes right <laughs> off the Tracer. He was thinking about it. You could tell. Uh, but Atlas and Aqua are going to Simmetra, like we mentioned earlier. That indoor point per, uh, point is just perfect for turrets. And then going for that aggressive defense, also great for turrets. Uh, so we really want to see what happens here. I know Valpo Beacon likes to take the high ground. Oh, and it looks like they actually swap off Symmetra in the first place. That's really unique. I wasn't expecting that. Most likely to getting the teleport in because they kind of, um, like you were saying, you think that Symmetra is a very good choice on this. Um, they may have been trying to focus on just getting um, the teleport in and assuming the other team is going to go Symmetra or uh, quick teleport in or Lucia or some way to get in really quickly. So Valpo was the first one to lose a uh, teammate, and now they lost a second teammate. So they're down a support, and they're down they're down both supports, and they're down their DPS. So it's just yeah. Reinhardt. Rana did a Hail Mary, couldn't quite get it, that's okay. No. They had to regroup anyway. And the first point will go to SIUE Red, mm -hmm. uh, with Valpo Beacon having to regroup and recover. I think they definitely can. In terms of ultimates, Lil Flaps has his Shatter ready, where the other mm -hmm. Reinhardt doesn't quite have it. But in terms of ults, that's where the, it ends, because Aqua's going to get their ult very soon. Their other supports have their ults. Uh, in fact, he just got Shatter before uh, Lil Flaps, actually. I, I was mistaken. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Bad ultimate from the Reinhardt, but a good one from Lil Flaps. Unfortunately, Going he was down. condensed enough. Atlas does a great job cleaning up uh, the opposing mm -hmm. Rhine. That's what I love about the Maywall. I can't kill the Orum Corvus. Ooh, that can, though. Yes. That's a Tracer buff. Oh, no. And they're down supports. Mm -hmm. This is a hard fight. But Let's see what happens. But keep in mind right there, they used three alts. And all they have right now, SIU, all SIUE has right now is the support alts. Um, 
so they're gonna need to have um so Valpo is gonna have a fair amount of alts to go into this next fight with um scoot's in a predicament and a half right now yes. he, he does have his supports he had a support but they left okay uh, but then we have some regrouping that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Lucio's coming back to support the Reinhardt to boost him into, so that's exciting. In terms of ultimates, Scoot has his ultimate. That's a really good ultimate, especially on this point. Or mm -hmm. Corvus, they need to be aggressive here. Or Corvus ultimate is a very powerful ultimate here for that aggressive push. And Atlas, you know, he's a hype man. He's got his Reaper ult soon, and it's amazing during Orin Corvus things. As well as Kyrick, they have the perfect ults they need. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of the opponents, they just use their anti mm -hmm. kind of ult there. Oh. Does get a lot of value there. That's really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. That's a that's mm -hmm. a team kill. Yep. Valpo has one more push. They have four ultimates. They have to play against a shatter and a tracer ult. Yep. Other than that, it's in the bag. I think they can do it. Kiriko if... going for the touch. It's a little early. I it's okay. He really wants to be on the point for a little bit. All right. Mm -hmm. There's the Kiriko ult that we wanted to see. There's yeah. the shatter that we were worried about. It does take all the support, oh, so you gotta be careful. Yep. Oh, Tracer does a great job picking the right person. And there's the Blizzard. That's a good Blizzard. He's just gotta hold the point. No. Ugh, he can't do it. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And SIUE will take the first map of this game. Yes. Um, something I noticed there is um, just a quick pick on the supports of Aram and Kirikuki. That just kind of took, um, that just set in motion, that just did not allow Valpo to get the point yet again. Um, a lot of, the shatter. Oh. lot of stuff too. Um, and the other thing I also noticed was that when um, the... Uh, Tracer right now. Tracer pulled out her alt. Oh, that's right. Um, Aqua. Yes, when Tracer pulled out her alt, she waited until there was no um, Kiriko from Valpo so that it couldn't be cleansed away. That's yeah. right. Good timing. And mm -hmm. also, I, I play damage quite a bit. Yes. If I see a Reaper blossoming, mm -hmm. the last thing I think to do as Tracer is to go right into it <laughs> and drop the bomb on him. But that's yes. exactly what happened, and that's exactly what SIUE Red needed at mm -hmm. that moment. So, incredible playstyle there. We're going to move on to the next map. Uh, it is going to be a hybrid map, yes. and Valpo Beacon will choose the map. So, the opposing team will ban. Um, in terms of hybrid, we got Blizzard World, Eichenwald, Hollywood, Kings Row, Midtown, Nubani, and Parezo. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're gonna ban what they're gonna ban, but I really think Valpo they banned Blizzard World. Okay. okay. Blizzard World makes sense. That's a bannable map. Not everybody loves I it. I uh, I have some inside knowledge. What was that? What's the inside? Um, so yesterday I was talking a little bit with some Deacon team. Yes. Players. Okay. And we've done a little bit of research, you know, scoping out teams and stuff. So uh -huh, we have uh -huh. our opponents. One thing we actually learned was that SIUE's best map is King's Row. So, which, for example, right here, um, they banned Blizzard World. Mm -hmm. That was not what Valpo was expecting. They were expecting them to ban Eichenwald. Ah. This is where Valpo really wanted to go. Yes. Uh, Eichenwald, for those that do not know, was not in this season's competition. It is only for playoffs, uh, which is one thing of its own. Also... Eichenwald is like the bread and butter of Valpo Beacon last year. Back when I was on the team, Eichenwald was our, one of our favorite maps. We know it like the back of our hands. We have these strategies that are locked in. It's going to be incredible. I'm really looking forward to it. The other team might not have been ready for this. They might not have a strategy. It's going to be really unique gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm I'm really excited because I haven't casted an Eichenwald game in forever. <laughs> so I'm excited to point out all the cool things that this map has to offer us. Yes, um, but one thing I am expecting, maybe from SIUE, is either an Echo or a Fara with mm. Eichenwall. And that's yes. a little bit scary. Um, from what I've heard from Beacon, in their opinion, they don't feel like they're um, as strong mm. against Faras and Echoes. So um, that might be a little tricky, but they did do a lot of practice against Fara last night. Oh, that's good. Yes, uh, <laughs> verticality is really important here. Uh, so looking at this map, we haven't seen this map in the entire time. So this is the main cart right below us, and we got this big tower that people have to wrap around. So if we go towards mm -hmm. it a little forward uh, to the right, 
and we'll see that little bridge right below. That is going to be the choke point that everyone has to worry about. Altitude is amazing up there. We might see a soldier on top of the bridge kind of looking at that damage pick. We might see uh, a Junkrat. Sc oh, Scoot going. Oh, Symmetra. It's going to be beautiful. He's going to turn up that wall. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I'm also loving the bat pick right here, especially oh, yes. along that first uh, choke point. A night like if we get stuck there, but we we get some nice ultimates, a nice bath window, that might be pretty good. Yes, for uh, some of the people that don't know ba what Baptiste Ultimate does, because we don't talk about it too much, uh, it it creates a green highlighted window effectively mm -hmm. uh, that is quite big, and any bullet that goes through it is going to deal more damage to the opponent. Any healing that goes through it is going to deal more healing points to our teammates. Mm -hmm. It's completely useless to the opponents, and it's only beneficial to us. So it's really handy to have. It's a really good ultimate. Really mm -hmm. great at shield breaking. Yes, um, there's a lot of good places for window here. Um, sad that there's, a, there's a teleport that we want to see. Oh. A very aggressive push. They got to be careful that Hanzo. Hanzo can take out Atlas at any oh. moment, just as we saw. But Symmetra does have the power right now, and definitely scaring the opponents. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Orem Corvus going for those heals there. Can't qu Oh, wait, no, that's the opposing Reinhardt. Oh, no, both Reinhardts are dead. Okay. Both Reinhardts are down. Keep the Sim alive. Sim has the charge. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Orem Corvus keeping up the Sim alive. You love to see it. Kira yeah, Kuki falling. That's unfortunate. Alice wait, is okay. already back in the fight. You love to see it. But they are going to regroup, though. One thing that I do, um, not really specifically with Beacon, because Beacon loves their Baptiste, um, uh, see a lot of people like kind of disregarding how much healing BAP can do, but BAP like kept Scoot and Atlas alive the entire time, which was absolutely Ooh. incredible. Great pick by SIUE's Tracer, knowing mm -hmm. that the supports are the uh, are what need to go, because they're not going to push a fight. This is a healing heavy map, uh, mm -hmm. so if you lose the support, you're losing the fight most likely, so you got to be really careful about that. So Tracer doing a good job getting the pick there, going for the high ground, Ooh. Orum Corvus. Falling to the Reinhardt, how tragic! Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have our Reinhardt in the high ground position. Tracer, that's yes. a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> Not the best choice, and uh, Scoot getting a snipe right there. Um, oh yeah, almost doing enough to kill. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Ooh, Tracer is a little bit out of position. Will she get finished? Not quite. No, that is a little unfortunate, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Valpo's going for a, a wide range, uh, long range. Lucille B is a really important ult to have here. There's the dragon. Mm -hmm. That was... Okay, that was a good dragon. Yes. They didn't go deep enough to really get trapped by it, so that's good. Mm -hmm. And here's the window. A window might be high ground. We'll see. Ooh, hey. there's a simul. That's our simul. I had to think about that. Uh, Kirika will ult on the opposing team, doing an anti-aggression push. So is a Lucio beat. That's not good for Valpo oh. Beacons. And it looks like they're definitely going to struggle here. That will be effectively a team kill. Mm -hmm. Atlas will fall. Will Orm Corvus get out alive? I think Orm Corvus... No, Orm no. Corvus. See, right now she's being... Oh! Um, yes. So, uh, they're staggering. That was uh, well done, and good job on SIUE to know that they need to stagger there. Really unfortunate for Valpo Beacon. They got a minute 30. They can definitely do this. Uh, we do see a little flap switching to Ramatra. Ramatra might be the play here. Mm -hmm. It's a little difficult to say. Like, both teams don't practice this in competition, so it's really hard to see. Atlas falling to the Tracer. Tra absolutely tragic. Also seeing the Echo come out from Scoot. Um, like I was saying, the high ground, uh, very important choice right here. Um, especially it looks Icon oh. Wand. I'm going to cut you off real quick to say Mercy came in clutch there, not only rezzing Atlas the Soldier, an important player to have here, but also taking down the Tracer. I don't know if you saw that. Shatter goes through there, was not expecting that. Unfortunate. Let's see. Orm Corvus, the only support available. You can't heal a Tracer. Oh, good decision there to teleport. Tracer is going to follow quickly. Let's see. The team can't fall back to health, but Tracer will be stuck in that position. Ah, unfortunate. All right, looking at ultimates, what do we got? We got Aqua on SIUE with the Dragon. We have Lil Flap's going to get his Ramatrol soon-ish, as well as Orm Corvus. But other than that, that's about ultimate. Oh, Sugar Rush could be getting their ultimates very soon, too. But that's about it. Uh, so yeah. we got to be really careful here. Then whatever happens next is very important. With 20 seconds left, Eichenwald might be a map that doesn't do well with Valpo Beacons. Yep. One of the things... Um, first oh, thing beautiful pick Atlas. by Atlas. We saw him yes. going for that push. And we just see him finish, so that's seeing, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Seeing the monkey swap, um, very interesting choice, especially due to closeness of Ram Alt. Wasted dragon right there, nothing yeah. done. Um, 
Alice getting another one with the waffle. Oh, oh. Jerk. look at that. That's a team kill in overtime. Almost uh, a team kill. Team Tracer's kill. still alive. Tracer's <laughs> still alive. But Tracer's not going to contest that. That that Tracer cannot contest. And Kirikuki taking, <laughs> taking it yet again. Uh, a lot of people underestimate our Zen on our team. Uh, yeah, that's not something you want to do. <laughs> I do know Kirikuki loves to play Zen on this map. Uh, uh, and it effectively makes it three DPS. And in a damage-heavy map, that is super important. Atlas does get stuck by... Uh... No, he got stuck by himself, it looked like. Yeah. But he got out of it, which is good. That's important. Well, he did die. Um, but oh. re regardless, um, he did. Um, he was kind of just getting stuck by the Rhine thing. Scoot going down, Kirikuki going down as well, with Arm Corvus and Little Flaps backing out right then. Yeah, so Scoot does have his ultimate, which is going to be really useful. Echo is one of the most uh, versatile ultimates available. Uh, Kirikuki with the Zen Yada ult. One of the best ults in the game, honestly. What they do have to play against is four ultimates on SIUE Red's team with a minute 30 left. So that's going to be really hard because if SIUE staggers our ultimates, it's going to be really difficult to get value that they need. So we got to be careful here. The team has been switching an awful lot, even especially when they have like ults and stuff. Um, so much that I barely ever see the team having like their ults come out from Beacon. Um, two members, both DPS going down. Ooh, he might not survive the fire. Yeah, Cybul will finish. Looking... It looks like Cybul and Aqua have both played Tracer this game. That's really unique. You don't see that often. Well, I think, um, I mean, so far, both rounds, we've had Atlas and Scoot playing uh, Tracer as well. So, kind of shows... That is true. <laughs> kind of shows the versatility of our DPS players. Yes, and I really, really, I got to give respect to Atlas. You know, he joined technically right after the start of the season he because he was originally on the club team and so he's just been but he's been a proud member of the beacon team he's fit right in ever since joining and he's done an incredible job mm -hmm. uh, at performing it's also his first year at, at valpo but also on the pro team so it's really awesome to see all the growth he's done over the years or over the season seeing this come in monkey um taking heaps of damage little flaps getting out but Nine seconds to touch. Are they gonna try and dive in? Not much to so do. So there's little flaps diving on the point. He does have ultimate, so his health gets low. He will ult. Ooh, the right art does miss the shatter, which is good to know. There's the ult that we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Bob is in play. That is a dangerous thing because look at that. Little flaps already has 200 health. That's scary. Mm -hmm. And, and there's the tracer. The tracer ult. So Atlas has pulse bomb, and he's the only one left on point. It's a scary thing. He is slowly letting it drag. Oh, oh. but he didn't get to... Dang! No. Well, that Tracer doesn't make it. <laughs> he, he was just slightly too late. It was like like two or three frames away from actually touching. I have to agree. I honestly can't blame points. him because being on point, altitude is way different than distance on the ground. Like it's if you're on the ground you're cl and you're farther versus but you're off the ground. If, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. if you're in the air, you're farther away from the cart than you should be. In my opinion, that's lame. And I've seen we call that a C9, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know what the C9 stands for, but it's when you are away from cart. So it's really tragic, really unfortunate. Uh, but you know what? They actually got it off the first point, and that's mm -hmm. what Valbo Beacon excels at is preventing them from leaving the first point. However. Mm -hmm. We did predict, Aubrey, that there would be what? A Fara. And what is there? A Fara. So here's to hoping that Valpo Beacon's practice they did last night, you said? Mm -hmm. Will yes. fold through here and will do a great job. Uh, mm -hmm. They do have Atlas on the Winston. No, it is not Winston. <laughs> oh my goodness. On Bastion. Bastion is one of the best ways to kill a flyer because he has a hit scan and he hurts. So it's going to be really beautiful here. I love to see it. Yes, Bastion has been uh, is a heavy killer for many teams. Um, but anyway, seeing the double healing from Beacon is also a really good thing. Mm. Um, both Kirikuki um, and Corvus, RM Corvus, are going the top two healers in the game, basically. Um, they have extreme healing output, and they also have cleanse potential. Ram is Very true. incredibly low. Oh, there's the far that we've been talking about, but it's got the bash a little hurt. Uh, far is getting mercy pocketed, so you gotta be careful oh, there. Oh yeah. 
Oh, I can't be out of position for too long. And she knows that too, so she's doing a good job staying out yes. of that. Um. So a quick history while this fight's happening. Oh, they do lose Scoot. This map is uh, Reinhardt's map and Bastion's map technically. Yes. Uh, so this is supposed to be Reinhardt's homeland. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of story. This is the whole highlight thing. But going back in the game, Valpo Beacon does get effectively taken out. Scoot does go Echo. I think Echo's a great counter to Farah. So you love to see it. And Tracer. You gotta be really careful about Tracer. Yes. Um, the Tracer has been the biggest problem, especially in Eichenwald for Valpo. Mm -hmm. um, there hasn't been a lot of, like... Um, it's just, like... She just keeps teleporting in, and it's just not working. Um, Hirokuki taking out the Farah, which is uh, something I know that is his favorite thing to do. His words, not mine. <laughs> um, so we are seeing that... Um... Oh my god! <laughs> you love to see it. Let's see, who's there? Okay, Soldier's there. Yeah, that's over. <laughs> uh, and that's called a very big stagger on that Tracer. <laughs> oh, and there goes... In okay. We, I, I talked about this at the very beginning, but I want to talk mm -hmm. about it again now. Atlas on Soldier. In my opinion, one of my favorite players on Beacon to watch when they're this character. He does such a fun job playing Soldier that I just enjoy watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to look a little bit at this. It's going to be really cool. He just does a great job with Soldier. He's very aware. He deals the damage. There's the Farah. That's scary. But you know what? We have Atlas on Soldier. And look at that. That that Mercy, that far, they're scared. They gotta be careful. Kirko does ult there. Scoot does fall. Unfortunate. Or Corvus oh. falls. Very not good. Cyba will fall. Atlas will take their other support. Oh, oh my goodness. A, a lot of people are falling. It's just tanks, but tank has a Mercy. Ryan does need to kill that Mercy and he knows it. Mm -hmm. But he can't get it because the robot is there. Oh, oh, and the Mercy reses. So that Mercy being alive was huge. Oh, and with... Oh, and that's going to be the point. SIUE red taking the second map of the game, mm -hmm. Eichenwald. <laughs> yes. Uh, so amazing work on the opposing tracer, but we do have Kirikuki uh, with the Zen uh, play of the game. Yes. So let's see what this happened here. Mm -hmm. And it oh, isn't I... just him staring at a dead corpse of his friend. That's true. <laughs> so let's see, he's doing a good job healing. They avoided the dragon. Mm -hmm. He's been helping deal damage, and he takes out the Reinhardt. So that's yeah. really good. Great support play that you want to see there. I still think Valpo did a really good job, all things considered. I still think this could be Valpo's game. They just got to work really hard for this. Yes. So the third map is going to be Escort. You know, Escort, we're looking at like Dorado, Havana, Gibraltar, Junkertown, Circa Royale, Rialto, Route 66, and Shambali Monastery. That's a lot of maps. <laughs> yes. Now, do you have an insider scoop on what they might be picking? I have an insider scoop. <laughs> Insider uh, that's Scoop, a person. I love that. That's a pun in my books. I like it. <laughs> Insider Scoop on Hybrid. I remember Hybrid. I remembered Control, and I remembered Escort. Uh, not Escort. Push. Mm. I did not remember Escort. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I, I think they were something. I think it was something about Dorado or Circuit Royale. Um, but I don't. I think they were trying to avoid Havana. Well, they don't need to worry about uh, Havana, Havana because that is what SIUE Red just banned. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll love to see that, uh, I think, unless they really wanted to play Havana. Hard to say. Um, but honestly, I think we might see a Watchpoint Gibraltar. That's such a wild map. Uh, people don't know it very well. Actually, maybe I won't because it's really great for Tracer and Farah. And that's what <laughs> they've been playing. Uh, same thing with Route 66. You want to be careful. Uh, I don't know where Valpo's want to gonna go, is gonna go here. They don't want to have anything that favors a Farah, so we might want to see like a, maybe a Junker Town, maybe a Circuit Royale. Circuit Royale is really good for hit scan, and that's what they kind of need right now. Rialto is very very Farah heavy, but also a little risky. Uh, Shambali Monastery can have some benefits as a um, far up but not enough to really count in my opinion so i don't really know where valpo beacon will go i'm a little embarrassed by the fact i don't have a good idea but i do know it's going to be a good fight and they're definitely mm -hmm. going to put their all into it and i'm looking forward to that yeah i'm just i'm just hoping there is no gibraltar and what we don't have to worry about that it's rialto yep. that's why i don't know remember but like 
I know it was like Dorado or something, something, something I had to wait to know, <laughs> which is unfortunately a lot. <laughs> now, I love Rialto because there's a lot of water. And what happens if a character falls into water? Uh, they die. They die. Uh, so <laughs> any character that can displace someone like a, um, a Lucio or even mm-hmm. a Junkrat or a Rissa or Hog or even... Zenyatta because of his melee and if they kick them into water goodbye they're dead and that's so funny to me and that can do such an important job as like team displacement mm-hmm. and getting picks without doing insane amounts of damage it's super cool super fun mm-hmm. I want to see that I'm looking forward to that but you know who does a really good job on that on this map Farah Farah <laughs> can do a really good job at doing that um, but one funny thing about the characters not being able to survive in water, it's very surprising because a lot of them, um, have some sort of, like, bathing suit skin or art of them in bathing suits, and yet they cannot swim. That's right. It uh, is ironic <laughs> that one of the skins for Cassidy is him mm-hmm. as a lifeguard, <laughs> and one of the skins for Junkrat has him in a bathing suit with swim trunks on, but also on his back is a floaty. Like a like a like a life preserving floaty, and he has floaties on his arm, so he they don't work. So I, you gotta yeah. be careful. <laughs> I apparently nobody in Overwatch can swim. Nobody in Overwatch can swim. I think they, they can... should work on that. Uh, that might be a good <laughs> thing to have. Not not for the fights, but like they should probably work on learning how to swim. <laughs> While we're uh, waiting for the match to get started, I will talk a little bit about the fun history and facts about Rialto. So Rialto, like most maps uh, in Overwatch, they tried to be an actual location, but super modern. Uh, And so what happened in Rialto is they tried to make it look like, I want to say Venice with all those canals, Mm -hmm. and they made it essentially super modern, kind of futuristic, super urban. So we're looking at the map right now, and we can kind of see that already kind of looks a little bit like Venice, you know. Uh, is Venice in Italy? I don't think. Yes, yeah, so Venice is. In oh, Italy. that's awesome! I'm so glad I know that. But you got the canals, you got the people. They're robots this time, helping the boats mm-hmm. instead of people. You got a statue there. That's really cool. Oh, um, no. oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying one of the unfortunate things um, for Valpo Beacon is SIU is constantly choosing. Um, their, um, starting out an attack is not my favorite, personally. I feel like that's most people's non-preferred method to start mm-hmm. on. So, we'll see what's going on here. We do have a little bit of displacement with Little Flaps and Alucio from SIUE, but not really a lot. No, not much at all. Um, we do, I wonder where the Little Flaps will be going with Ball here. Uh, it is a little risky. I don't know if you'll hold on to it the whole time. I'm going to take a wild guess and say no. However, one <laughs> thing I am going to say right now is I understand a lot of the switches Valpo Beacon has been using, oh, but a yes. lot of those switches have also been costing them massive alt charge, which they mm. need. And yes. I think that's one of the huge problems they have right now is that they're just lacking in the alt department. Wow. One of the best ways to describe an ult is a way to change the game, change the motion. So Mm -hmm. if you use an ultimate, the idea is that it will help your team in a huge way uh, that will be very difficult to counter. Uh, So you love to see, oh, the Hanzo getting displaced so well. So the high ground is controlled by Babble Beacon. You can see Hanzo doing some effort to get up there. Uh, But you got to be careful about that, Hanzo. You can't be doing that. Seabull getting up there again. Scoot trying to focus on um, just kind of playing that background and going after that tracer as much as possible. Um, oh, Scoot did die, unfortunately, there. Ooh, there so Valve Beacon does not short. have DPS. You gotta be careful about that. Uh, and so, there's no far though. That tracer did the, the recall at the exact time they needed to. Holy cow. Yep, barely surviving. Living on a prayer right there. Um, here, Kiki staying far back on Ana is kind of um, is a very smart choice, but right now um, I feel like a Zen might be a good choice too. Um, it's hard to say. I think they really need that healing with Ball, because uh, Ball goes in hot. But man, Valpo Beacon keeps losing their DPS left and right, and that's not good. No other way to say that. No, right now it's just been a lot of like back and forth and back and forth. 
And this is where Ball's just kind of not playing the game. Once again, we're seeing another DPS switch going on. Seeing a Genji and a Farah, both from I Valpo. like the Genji pick. I don't know how I feel about Farah on offense here. Um, we'll see how it works. Um, I'm oh, not absolutely. Gonna, not going to say. It might be just what they needed. Um, seeing right there, Scoot taking out the... Um, Scoot taking out the Hanzo, almost about to go down on his own though. Um, Atlas going down. Be Scoot. careful that tracer. Going down yet again. DPS just not getting down, just not working. Healers falling short. Suit. So in um, terms of ultimates, uh, Aqua has his dragon. Uh, there's a Ramatra ult and the supports on SIU. Both are gonna have their ults. Uh, in terms of beacon. We just have support ults, so we gotta be really careful here, really mindful. Support ults can be really good here, especially on the offensive. I feel like, uh, yeah, Kiriko ult is always really handy to have an offensive. Um, and also this Genji is in a great spot uh, with the Kiriko. Also, Far doing a good job being up high ground. Joker Queen that is a switch off a of ball. I personally like it. Joker Queen's really good. Uh, at least I really enjoy her playstyle. Sleep, good at sleep. Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to say what's happening here. Is he gonna fall to his death? Yeah. yeah. So Joker Queen, born in the desert, can't swim. Orm Corvus will follow. Um, one of the things too is that they tried to use um they tried to use just the Kirko uh, gates to get to the point, and that just didn't take it. Normally gates wins you a fight, but this time it just didn't. Um, that's true. We do have Genji coming, so that's really exciting. I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe a nano blade. It might. I would be risky, love a nano though. blade. It's it, really risky, but I would love to see Atlas on nan uh, Genji nano blade. Let's see it, what. Let's see where Genji is now. I'm not. I'm not gonna say like it's the best choice, but like it's also not the worst. If you're if you're just like, I mean, with the place beacon. Alright, there's the right blade. Now, Will he get nanoed? Oh, he definitely nope. needed a nano there, but. I mean, where was the Ana? The Ana was out of sight. So no, 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 no blaming the Ana there. Nope, not right there. Nothing much you can really do. Going Doomfist, trying to get that pick on the Lucio and it wasn't working out is what they were planning. All right, there's a pick. That's good value. I don't know why uh, Lil Flaps is set on not playing a shield here. It's a little unique, especially since he does play shield characters. Probably the best in my opinion, but this is looking really favorably for Valpo Beacon, mm -hmm. uh, at least for getting to the next point. Uh, yes. So that's really exciting. Uh, Scoot still on Farah. Atlas switching off to Reaper. I'd have to agree. Mm -hmm. Reaper's a strat here right now. Uh, but don't get me wrong, SIUE will recontest this point. I, I definitely know Nana went out. I don't know who it went out to. Uh, so that is unfortunate. Tracer is in the back line. That is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Ash dealing the damage. Getting heavy damage. Um, that. And that is going to be first point going first point not that big of a distance one of the main things siue has been really good at this game um is that they have decided let's just not go for supports mm -hmm. absolutely and somehow normally that doesn't work yet somehow this time it is they're being really careful and they're letting their tracer deal a ton of picking at the opponent's support mm -hmm. no opponent's gonna no if for any team if they don't have their supports in a comfortable position they will not knowingly like push in knowing that information so valpa beacon doing a great job communicating is aware when their supports are in trouble or not able to mm -hmm. constantly heal them that supports kind of really need and so they can't go in too strong without risking their supports lives so you gotta be really careful there however you know this looks grim for valpo i will not lie and it's not great but I've seen a full hold points on the, on harder teams than this. So I think if Valpo Beacon goes in with the mentality that, like, we're not out, we got to fight this, and we can fight this, we will see some incredible uh, playmanship here. We see some great defensive picks with the Bastion. I wish he went... Oh, this is Scoot. I wish Atlas went Soldier and Scoot went uh, Reaper, but that's just me being a little critical. Aqua is going the far. They expected to see that. And Waffle mm -hmm. will be the mercy behind the support. Um, I think the main reason why Scoot's going is, um, from what I've seen, Scoot is really loves his far distance fighters. And he might feel more confident playing the um, attack, um, trying to get that sniper down. Got for you. example, and there goes, far there goes, goes Aqua. down. 
Fire us down right away. Um, just kind of showing proof um, that like like why Scoot would want to go and focus on um, going Bastion instead this time. Siebel going down too from Little Flaps. A very good job indeed with their DPS going first. Um, main thing right now is just getting that um, that Farah and that uh, Mercy out of the sky. Unfortunately, they're playing that corner really well. Siebel finally switching. I think this yeah. is the first time they don't actually have a... Um, a um tracer on the board that's true um, so what valvo beacon needs right now is common displacing of the opponent's character so cyber going mm -hmm. down there that's exactly what they want you know their ramatra also going down huge yes. so that is what oh that's a cool trick that's mm -hmm. exactly what valvo beacon wants is not necessarily the whole team kills but the one at a time mm -hmm. and keeping the others little oh if that Love wasn't that Mercy, that would have been a dead character. <laughs> would have been a dead Mercy in the sky. And that's one thing, um, as a Mercy main myself, Ooh, one thing that's I tragic. really hate, getting Javelin down the sky, but Aqua using their ult to their advantage. And unfortunately, that's a lot of damage. So Cure Cookie's trying to stay alive. Unfortunately, oh. Fire gets a pick. So Valpo has to push this, and they have a hard point to push. They can do it, though. They definitely can. They have the ultimates they need. Uh, Cybo doesn't have Reaper ult yet. They just have Waffle. Sugar Rush, too. Sugar Rush is a really good ult to have on attack, though. However, we have it, too, so we might need to use it to cross the bridge because we have seconds to respond. Yep. Um, using yep, there it is. There it is. Using pick the on the Reaper. as well. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's three. Nice. Were there any other ults? No, just support nope. ults. That's good. Support ults, team kill. You'll love to see it. That's exactly what needs to happen. They have to play against the two support ults and a blossom. Oh. So you gotta be careful. Really careful. But they do have the two damage ults and the tank ult, which is really good. Really good to have. Yeah. Um. If, uh, I, if I didn't know that Life Weaver was currently banned right now, honestly, I would be probably telling Kirikiki to go Life Weaver with the expectation <laughs> that Orisa ult is coming. Um, Life Weaver's ult Ooh, is going to basically negate uh, Reese's ult, but that's not possible right now, so. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's Whoa. the ult I wanted to see. Where's the Blossom? Not doing much. Okay, the Blossom got slept. Uh, Alright, we, we. Ah, yep. tragic. And Very the Ana's the only one alive, but it's being pushed back so oh. hard. So, SIUE Red will win it all. Um,. They were the number one seed, and they yes. were the number one seed for a very good reason, it looks like. Uh, they did an incredible job. But Scoot, we'll get play of the game, one of our own. I salute you. <laughs> and let's see what happened. All right, so sees the Reaper, absolutely destroys them. <laughs> Support's doing a great job healing him. Far gets too close. <laughs> and what else we got here? And there we go. Sugar Rush is uh, completely kicked out of yep. the life, I guess. It has to be spot. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that is it for um, Valpo um, Overwatch's season. Um, yeah. And we... That's all of Overwatch, too. Club, Shield, all and Overwatch. Beacon. All yep. of them are done. They might, some of them might go to Nationals. Shield might, might go, go to Nationals. nationals. We'll go, so that's know. exciting. Um, we're not going to be streaming it, so that's it for unless... us. Unless. I, I don't know. <laughs> so we're not know. streaming it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jing. I'm Aubrey. And have a great rest, a great rest of your night. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.